Today I'm going to talk about how to create uniform space filling designs using the sequential design of experiments module in the focus tool set. If you'd like to learn more about the general um, up methods available in the sequential design of experiments module or if you want some more details about some of the specific space filling design capabilities that are in focus I'd recommend taking a look at one of these other videos Today's video is just going to talk about one space filling design in particular, which is the uniform space filling design in focus. Within the sequential design of experiments module in focus, there's a range of different space filling design methods that are available to support different phases of the experimental process. If you'd like to learn more about how to strategically select the correct design methodology to fit your problem, to fit your application, I'd recommend taking a look at the video um, about the overview of sequential design of experiments for scaling up carbon capture technologies that talks a little bit more about how these pieces fit together and how they can be selected. In today's video, we're going to focus on one piece in particular where we're going to say um, we're looking at an example where this is a first phase experiment and we're going to be using a uniform space filling design. This is an example is a model for an NEA system where we have three inputs of interest. We have rich solvent flow rate, flue gas flow rate, and steam flow rate. And the test objective um, for this experiment is to identify optimum operating conditions for CO2 capture rates from 50 to 90%. We have a set experimental budget of 25 runs, and we want to design an experiment to make the best use of that experimental budget that we can. So we're going to use sequential design of experiments methodology to allocate that budget strategically over several stages in order to learn as we go and increase the efficacy across each stage of the process. Specifically, the stages of the process um, are going to look like this. So we want to first explore our input space, and then we want to do some refined model building and targeting particular areas of the input space to really do model refinement and reduce uncertainty in our model. And then finally, we want to move into optimization in order to find the, um, in order to find the optimum um, area where, again, we're interested in making sure that we're talking about capture rates of 50 to 90 percent. And so we're going to use different design methodology to best meet the objectives of each of these phases. In this video, we're talking about phase one, exploring the input space. And so here we're going to use a uniform space filling design. Again, we have a 25 run uh, we have a budget of 25 runs, and so we've allocated them approximately equally. In phase one, we're going to use nine to 10 runs, sort of depending on what the designs look like, and then we'll allocate the rest of the budget to phases two and three equally. The uniform space filling design that we're going to use in this phase one to explore the input space We've selected because uniform space filling designs seek to place the design points evenly throughout the space of interest. And that gives us the best shot of really exploring that entire space. So we're going to try to really, you know, collect information throughout the region. And we can do that very flexibly using the uniform space filling designs that are available in the sequential design of experiments module in focus whether the design space that we're searching over is a regular just rectangular region or whether it's an irregular region we have flexibility um, to use either in our case we have an irregular region but again that's not a problem using the sequential design of experiments module and the way that we account for an irregular region is to specify a candidate set so the candidate set specification is always going to be step one when we're generating a design using the sequential design of experiments module in focus. Whether our um, space is regular or irregular, either way, our step one is always going to be specify a candidate set. The candidate set is going to be a set of potential input combinations from which the design points are going to be selected. 
So we want to make sure that these candidate set points are all um, feasible, that they operate any condition, any constraints in, or excuse me, that they account for any operating constraints in the process. We don't want to include any undesirable input combinations because it, any one of these input combinations may end up in the design that we're ultimately going to end up using. So we really want the candidate set to span the entire feasible space. Oftentimes that looks like a grid um, with points as close together as is kind of reasonable. And again, the point of that is to just make sure that we have a good thorough covering of the space of interest so that when we go in to select which of those space, which of those points will end up in our design, we've made sure that we've covered the space that we're really interested in covering in our experiment. In our model for the MEA system, we are going to use a candidate set that we already have from an existing model. We're going to go into focus now and take a look at how that all is going to fit together. So here we're in focus and we're going to go into the sequential design of experiments module. The first thing that we can choose between is whether we're going to rely on space filling design methodology or robust optimality based um, design of experiments capabilities. And we're really interested in this example in space filling. So we have that button clicked. And now again, step one is going to be to specify a candidate set. In our case, we already have one specified from an existing model. But if that were not the case, if we didn't already have one, we would click on generate new candidate set. Now, if this were um, in, in our example, this is the first phase of experimentation that we've performed at this scale. So this is a um, this is a first experiment. But if instead we'd already previously collected data at the scale that we wanted to incorporate into our analysis, we would say this is a sequential experiment and we would load in the previous data that had been collected. Again, in our case, we actually have a candidate set already, so we can click on load existing set instead. And then we're just going to go ahead and select the file that contains the candidate set. Here, um, Focus is telling us that we have a candidate set of 93 points and we have full, you know, no missing values in any of our columns of our candidate set, which is great. And again, we've got a column for each of the three variables, each of the three inputs in our design. So everything looks good and we can say, OK, we can also go ahead and view our candidate set. And again, here we're seeing um, that nice, dense um, collection of points in the three inputs of interest. And we can plot them and take a look at them, you know, all, all the dimensions, whatever kind of um, combination of dimensions we want. So here, you know, taking a look at that, um, you can see sort of we've got this irregular region for the design, for the um, for the space of interest, our candidate set covers in a regular region, but you know we have pretty good coverage in in these two dimensions, and you know so everything's looking good. And the next step then we can do um, is move into actually generating the design. So we can click continue. As we start to generate designs, um, they'll be saved for us automatically in this output directory. So it's going to list what that is. I can view it. I could change the output directory by going into settings, but everything's looking good right now. Since this is the first phase of our experiment, we didn't have any previous data to load in. So that's why previous experiments says none. And our candidate file. Um, this says aggregate candidates because it could be the case that we have multiple candidate set files that we want to upload. And in which case we could do that and then focus would go ahead and aggregate it so that it's just one file. In our case, since we only uploaded a single file, that aggregate looks exactly like the original file that we uploaded. So everything there is looking great. And now we can select the design method that we want to use. 
Again, there are three different space filling design methods available in this module, but we want to go with the uniform space filling design for this example, and so that's what we're going to select. And now we can click open the dialog box. So here we are in the actual design um, platform. And you can see we have each of our three inputs listed and the type is selected to input. So that's great. Focus also includes an ID with type index, just so that we can easily keep track of which of the points from our candidate set actually ends up in our final design. So that's just a nice piece of comparison. If we didn't want that, we could uncheck it. Um, but I do like it. I think it's nice to have. So I'm going to keep that box checked. Again, we're using a uniform space filling design, which seeks to spread the design points out throughout the space of, of interest. But what does it mean to spread the design points out? There are two uh, different criteria ex that exist in the focus module um, to define what spread out means. The minimax optimality criterion is going to select design points to try to minimize the maximum distance between the design points and any point in the input space. So any other point that's possible um, in, as, as specified by the candidate set. One thing to note is that if we had included previous data, we had previous experiments that we'd collected data in, then the minimax uh, criterion would also try to select design points to minimize the maximum distance between not only any design point, but also any point in the previous data so that we're not repeating ourselves and sampling where we've already sampled. Maximin is just another way of defining how to, uh, what spread out means. So maximin just maximizes the minimum distance between any two design points and in the case when we had previous data collected, also between uh, any design point and the previous data. So it's, you know, both of these are good options and it's often a good idea to generate some designs using both of these optimality criteria, just because they're gonna give us slightly different looking designs. And that way um, the experimenter can look at what the different designs are and sort of decide which one best fits the needs for their um, particular experiment. In general, Maximin um, tends to collect data uh, more, you know, around the edges, whereas Minimax avoids the edges. So if there's worry that any of the edge, uh, edges are not feasible, then definitely going with Minimax is a good idea. But again, in, in general, it's nice to look at both. One thing that's really great in focus in the sequential design of experiments module is we have these tool tips that pop up and essentially that tool tip is just telling you everything that I just um, that I just mentioned about the different optimality criteria and the selections. Um, so there's lots of, of help um, that are just like available in the module to sort of guide some of these choices. In our case, we want to really explore the whole space without emphasizing the edges at all. So because of that, I'm going to select the Minimax criterion. And now the next question is, what is the desired design size? Um, in, if we have a range of design options, we can go ahead and select that. So we can say, if we say from the min of 2 to a max of 8, then Focus is going to give us um, a collection of designs ranging in size from two to eight. On the other hand, if you know exactly what size you want, let's say I only have a budget of seven runs, then I can just say min design size is seven, max is seven, and it'll give me one design with seven runs. In our case, we have a little bit of a flexible budget. We can do nine, 10, somewhere in that range. So I'm going to go ahead and set the max size as 10 and the min size as nine, and that'll give us two designs to look at. Okay, we can click estimate runtime now, which tells us how long it's gonna take to generate my, my two designs. And the last, the last decision that I need to make is how many random starts to use. The more random starts, the better. Um, it just gives us a better chance of finding a good design. 
but the more random starts, the longer the design generation takes. So it's a good idea to just select the largest number of random starts that you have time for. And if this is an important design problem, then definitely going with bigger and letting focus run um, longer to, to find the best design possible is a good idea. Once we've selected the desired um, number of random starts, we would just click run SDOE and then we would eventually get our, um, our desired design. We're gonna pop back over to PowerPoint to look at what those designs look like after I let Focus run and after it gives me my two designs. I asked for design of size nine and one of size 10. And so here we can see what those look like. You can see that in both cases, we're spanning the space of interest. Again, we had that irregular design, we had that irregular design region. And so we've got um, points that cover that nicely in both, in both design sizes. Here I've used random starts of 10 to the four, um, or kicking it up to 10 to the fifth, we can see that in this case, our designs look pretty comparable, so that's good. Um, and again, in particular, we have a nice spread. Here's what the original candidate set looked like. So you can see again, that irregular region that we're covering. And here's what our uniform space filling design with nine runs looks like. And you can see that, again, we have a nice spread throughout the region. Okay, there's some holes in here, and that's okay, though, because this is just phase one of a multi-phase design problem. We've only used a third of our budget. So as we go forward into, into the future phases, we'll start to fill in any of these gaps in the design space. Um, but for now, this is a really great starting design that, we, that we've gone ahead and selected. So what we'll do now is operate the system at those nine USF input combinations. And um, if we want, we can use some ordering capability to reduce the required resources. And that is going to allow us to um, collect more data more quickly. Um, the ordering capability is also available in Focus and it just gives us the ability to um, put the design points in an order that allows us to run through them as quickly as possible. Whether we use that or not, either way, we'll operate the system at those input combinations, we'll collect the response of interest at each of those specified input combinations, and then we will update our model with the collected data. We're here because we're exploring the space of interest, we're really interested in do our results agree with our model. And then that'll be phase one completed, We'll move into phase two then, where we uh, collect additional data to start model building, to start refining our model. Um, and here we're gonna use the non-uniform space filling design methodology. And if you'd like to see how we would apply that using Focus, you can uh, take a look at the video titled How to Create Non-Uniform Space Filling Designs in Focus, where we'll continue this example into phase two.